In our final tutorial covering the VFX process and After Effects, we're going to talk about integration. Integration is what we do after our compositing stage to really make our composited elements integrate into the environment that we've placed them in. In terms of selling the audience on your composite, integration is one of the most important stages. To teach you integration, I'm going to cover this exercise in passes, working on color correction per layer, color correction for the entire shot, and then what I call the environmentalizing elements, things like overlays and light leaks and the like. To get started, let's go ahead and work with basic color correction per element. I'm going to start with the element that is the closest to us, and that's the car. I'm going to go ahead and select the car ISO image in my timeline, and let's come up to effect and come down to color correction. These are the different color correction effects we have at our disposal in After Effects. We aren't obviously going to use every single one of these, but we will be using the same color effects per layer. So it kind of becomes this repetitive process that's easy to learn. Let's start with hue and saturation. We're going to use hue and saturation to desaturate our image. You can see here that my original plate for my video is a bit flat. Our goal here is to flatten and desaturate the element. I'm going to come up here to my saturation slider. Going all the way to the left makes this complete grayscale. That's not what we want to do. I want to find a nice in-between. Right around negative 27 looks good on my end. And a quick note on values. As I go through this, my values may look a little different than yours. Trust your eyes and color correct to what looks good for you. With desaturation applied, I'm going to come back up to my effect, color correction, and then I'm going to come down to levels. Levels is important because it helps us to mimic the contrast of the original video shot, and namely our gray tones. Obviously, the left slider, if we increase this, is going to increase our black values. Our right slider is going to increase the white values, and our middle slider, though, is our gray values. The gray values are great because they help us to wash out the image to match our video clip. Taking our grays over to the right is going to make this more contrasty. To the left is going to make it more washed out. We want to find a nice in-between here. That looks pretty good to me. So with hue and saturation and levels, let's come up now to effect, color correction, and let's come down to lumetri color. Lumetri color is Adobe's all-in-one color correction and color grading panel. There's a whole bunch of sub effects here, and I have an entire tutorial dedicated to teaching the lumetri color panel inside of Premiere. The nice part is once you learn it in Premiere, it's the exact same in After Effects. Let's start with our basic correction. This allows us to change our white balance and the overall tonality of our image. Namely, it allows us to increase the warmth or the coolness of the layer. In this case, I'm going to go in the negative just a little bit. And allows us to change the green or the magenta of our tint. I'm going to make this slightly green by negative one, hardly anything. The GH5 that I filmed this on has a slightly cyan green to it, so I'm going to go negative to the green. The tonality here we adjusted with our levels, but I will minus the exposure by negative 0.1. It might not seem like a lot, but a little bit goes a long way in our exposure. I'm going to increase the contrast to 20, and that's starting to look pretty good. I'm not going to worry about the rest of these just yet. We'll come back to these when we start to do some fine-tune adjustments later on. Now for the next effect. Let's come up to Effect, Blur and Sharpen, and then come down to the Camera Lens Blur. Now this is really important. Blur is a critical part in making our images feel more integrated to their environment. Why? Because still photographs are always going to be sharper than video. So if I select camera lens blur, it's going to apply a general blur of five for my camera lens blur radius. Now this helps mimic the hexagonal shape of a regular camera aperture. So it's a little more powerful than a regular, say, Gaussian blur, but the default radius is too much. I'm going to decrease this to one. Now, how do you know how much to blur? Well, if you zoom in really far and pan down, 
we can start to see that there is a general amount of blur to these pixels when we zoom in. The goal is to match the blur of the car to the blur of the environment around it. So one might be a little much. I'll go to 0.5. And that starts to integrate it a little more to the natural blur of the pixels in the video. So our process here was working with desaturating using hue and saturation, our levels to kind of work with the contrast of our layer overall, lumetri color to adjust the white balance and a little more of the tonality, and then camera lens blur to make the blur match that of the video. Now it's not perfect and we'll come back and do some fine tune adjusting as we go, but this is a great start. Go ahead and repeat these exact same effects on your tower layer. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward my process. our car and our tower layers color corrected and blurred, let's move on to our building in the background. This one's going to be fun. We're going to walk through the same process that we did before, but we're going to add an extra element of integration and that's masking. Now let's come up and let's do our regular process. I'm going to select my environment in my timeline, come up to effect color correction, and I'll work with desaturation first. around negative 21 for me. I'll come up to effect, color correction, levels. Now we wanna make sure that this looks fairly washed out. Things that are further away tend to be a bit more washed out in the environment, especially on a cloudy day. We generally wanna stay away from our highlights. Uh, highlights make things shine and we don't want things to shine when we're trying to mimic reality. Let's come up to effect, color correction, and then down to Lumetri color. Toggle down basic correction, and in this case, I'm gonna take the tint plus one, because it looks a little too green to me. Plus one adds a little bit of magenta. The color temperature looks a little cool, so I'm gonna go plus three into the positive to warm this up a little bit. Now let's add our camera lens blur. Let's come up to effect, blur and sharpen, camera lens blur. This defaults to five, which I think is a little too much. I'm gonna dial this back to four and see what that does. Perhaps still a little too much. Let's try 3.5. That looks pretty good. The blur seems to match, if not be a little more so than the foreground, which would be natural because it's further away. If I come back here, that starts to look pretty well integrated, but there's still something missing. It's a cloudy day and this is far away which means it should be kind of a little more integrated into the clouds. To do this, we're gonna use masks. With your environment layer selected in your timeline, let's get out the pen tool. I'm gonna to zoom out a little bit to do this. I'm gonna draw a mask and kind of cut off the top part of the building. It might seem a little strange, but once we do this, I'm gonna hit F on the keyboard to bring up the mask feather. I'm going to increase the mask feather substantially, upwards of the 300s. Can you see what we're doing? This makes it look like the top part of the building is integrated into the clouds from the cloudy day. And this goes a long way in making this building feel like it's a part of this environment. So now when I zoom out and deselect here, that could almost pass for real. So now that our layers have been color corrected, per layer. Let's go ahead and add a adjustment layer to color correct the entire image. I'm going to go ahead and change my view back to fit. And I'm going to go up to layer, new, adjustment layer. This creates an adjustment layer. If it's not at the top of your timeline, go ahead and drag it up there. And adjustment layers allow us to add effects to them that will impact everything underneath. In this case, let's come up to effect, color correction, Lumetri Color. Lumetri Color now is going to let us color correct the entirety of this image. Namely, I want to come down to the Creative pull down. 
The creative pull down gives us our looks and looks are kind of like Instagram filters for video. We want to be careful that we don't add too much of these toggle down the none pull down. And I particularly like the SL clean Fuji a HDR effect. When I click on this, you can see it's very subtle, even with an intensity of 100, but it gives a little bit of that teal and orange look. This looks pretty good. We can also come up to the basic creative and we can adjust some of the white balance and tonality of this image overall. Um, for example, I want to increase the warmth of this image by three. I want to add a little more magenta. So I'm going to go one. I can come down to my color wheels and I can add some more blue to the shadows, which always makes things look a little more cinematic. In my midtones, I can make a little more orange, leaving the highlights alone. That looks pretty good. If I just turn off my adjustment layer here, you can see what a difference that's made in the color and integration of our image. Now, one thing I want to do in terms of masking and color correction is come down to our opening shot, not our roto layer. And I want to add a new adjustment layer above this opening shot layer, new adjustment layer. And on this adjustment layer, I want to add an effect under color correction called curves. Now I want to color correct the clouds here. I want to make them look a little more ominous and dark. And to do this, we have to pull down the shadows and increase the highlights. But what's the issue? Well, it's changing the contrast for the entire image. Well, we can actually mask adjustment layers. So with your adjustment layer selected in your timeline, come up to your pen tool and let's mask out just the area around these clouds, a relatively loose mask. And because we want this to feel more integrated, let's hit F on the keyboard, come down to the feather and let's increase this feather a little bit. So that hard edge goes away on our mask. With your selection tool out, you can go ahead and refine the edges of the mask. So at this point we've done color correction per layer. And then we did color correction per adjustment layers to change the overall look of our image. Let's go even further and make some refinements. Now that I see this holistically, my overall video clip needs some color correction. I'm going to come down to my opening shot image. I'm going to come up to effect, come down to color correction. I'm going to go down to levels because this is straight out of the camera. It's always going to be flat. And I know we added some adjustment layers to help with this, but it didn't do a whole lot to my original image. I'm going to increase the black values a little bit to add some contrast. My whites look pretty good. So I'm going to leave the right slider alone. Now we have to remember that when we increase something for our opening shot, we have to copy and paste that effect onto our roto layer. Otherwise, as you can see, if I emphasize this, our roto layer stands out like a sore thumb. So I'm going to come to my levels effect, hit control C or command C to copy that effect, click on my roto layer and hit control or command V to paste it. And now it's a bit more integrated. Increasing the black values of my background now makes me realize I need to change some things in the tower. And if you can't tell by now, integration is kind of a dance. It's a push and pull. As you change something somewhere, you may have to go back and adjust something elsewhere. And eventually the image really starts to come into view. At this point, your computer may start to give you some grief. A lot of color correction with a rototract layer, a lot of masking. Um, this is going to make your computer work for its money. So be careful and save often. Now, the last thing we need to do here before we move on to the environmentalizing layers is to add motion blur to our 2D elements. So our camera moves here, which means there is going to be natural motion blur. So let's come down to our checkboxes on each of our integrated layers and turn on the motion blur checkbox for that given layer, the car, the tower, and the building. This is going to ensure that as the camera begins to move, that these layers will blur as the movement takes place. The last part of integration is going to be what I call environmentalizing, which is taking things like flares and dust to really add some extra dimension to your image. Now I have a flare here that I'm going to drag into and on top of all of my layers. 
Flares need to be screened, so we have to make sure that we come to our mode pull down and change this to screen. This removes the black and just leaves any of the color from the flare. Now you may not like flares. I happen to side with JJ Abrams on the coolness of flares. But if you don't like flares, feel free to leave the flare out. But it does do a lot to cover some of the edges that may not be up to par. Now I'm going to adjust by clicking and dragging my actual flare layer. I'm going to pull this over because this particular flare doesn't come in until a little bit later. You can start to see it there as it comes in. I also want to add a dust layer. I have the M dust effect here. I'm going to drag down beneath my flare. And like flares, we have to make sure that we change the pull down for our dust layer to screen. Now, this looks nowhere near realistic for several reasons. The dust particles are a bit too large and it just it seems a little flat. So we're going to actually add a mask to this. Get out your rectangle tool with your dust layer selected and we're going to draw a mask. Draw a rectangular mask over the bottom portion of the dust. Hit F on the keyboard to bring out the mask feather. And let's increase the feather substantially. Nearly 600%. With my selection tool out now, I can kind of start to come in here and refine this. Even getting my pen tool back out and adding some points along the way if I want the dust to appear a little more on one side of the image or not. Now, something that's going to help this is by making this a 3D layer. Why? Because as our image moves, we want the dust to actually move with the camera. Otherwise, the dust is going to look like a pure overlay and it's not going to actually move. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on both the motion blur and the 3D checkbox. And this is going to make it on the same plane as the car, which is good because I kind of want the dust to look like we're walking into it as the shot progresses. We may want to add a camera lens blur to really sell the integration of this dust as well. Now this has a pretty good look to it. The dust adds some depth, the flare adds some haze over the top of everything. The tracking in Z space works for the most part, but feel free to go back and fine tune anything we've done in these last three tutorials. Integration is really fun. It is tedious, but it's really fun because you start to see your overall image come together in a cohesive shot. Now we didn't do any special effects for this particular take. We were purely trying to composite and integrate some elements into a shot. The process is the same. So have fun with the visual effects process inside of After Effects and go forth and make some compelling and well-integrated composites. 